Hello, everybody. Welcome to Library Side Chats, not Fireside Chats. As you can see, uh, Michael is not with me today. Uh, the reason we didn't put anything out last week and we're not doing anything together this week is because uh, Mike's had a problem with his internet broadband connection and it just was not working. And so he should have that finished by Tuesday and we'll hopefully be back on track. But um, I just wanted to come on and say thank you all so much for your your wonderful comments and for your prayers and and your encouraging uh, encouraging viewership. We, our heart is just to sit down and invite you in and share and talk and visit. One thing the Lord's put on my heart, you know, we're going to do a little bit more interactive. I'm going to have Reshma on um, starting, you know, in the next few weeks. We're going to have Reshma on a little bit more often and then... Uh, Possibly Michael will have Gordana, but I've got other people that we're going to invite on just to just to talk and uh, hear what the Lord's saying in some of their lives. I know uh, one of the things we're very cognizant of and careful of is to know those whom labor among you. That's what the scripture says. So we do all of this by relationship or recommendation by somebody who has a relationship. So I, I just don't, uh, you know, it, it's, very rare I would just invite somebody I don't know or somebody just said I want to come on. I, that we don't, we got to be careful. We got to know each other. It's not to say that they're not valuable part, assets in the kingdom of God and all that, but I'm just going by what the Lord has taught us. Uh, just a little bit of an update also. We're getting our, I've got the three cameras and the switcher and everything now to set up properly. Uh, for myself, you know, downstairs, it's not the best situation having to do this in the basement of our home, but it's better than uh, not doing it all. This right now is in my office. The fireside, where we started fireside chats, is downstairs. And we'll, uh, we're will we trying to arrange that and get that set up. Uh, there's a few more things we have to put in place and uh, maybe a couple more pieces we have to acquire of equipment. But uh, we're excited about that. Of course, our heart is to have our own training center and in the training center be able to record, but uh, that hasn't come about yet. We just keep praying along those lines and believing God. And if you would pray together with us, that would be awesome. Uh, I'd like to run two, at a minimum, two of the schools a month if we had our own training center here. And uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're moving towards this as God leads and the Lord provides. So keep us in prayer on that. Speaking of schools, we just finished one at Global Glory, which used to be the old End Time Handmaidens Complex in uh, Arkansas. That was, I've got to say, that was the to date the best school we've ever done. There was such a liberty, such a release of the Spirit of God. And, and uh, we actually had that one recorded so that we can update our online school. And when that gets all edited and updated, we'll, we'll let you know. That was absolutely over the top for me anyway. I, I mean, the presence of God was so tangibly powerful. And Reshma did an amazing job. Michael did an amazing job. And uh, even Gordana shared a little bit. But um, one of the things I haven't really uh, mentioned too often, but in, in the schools, it's not just that we want to come and teach. We want to raise up others. Who have the vision and the anointing. You know, Scripture is very clear that you train up, you know, those who will be able to carry the same message. And that's that's been my heart from the beginning. I don't believe in one man shows or, you know, just doing this all by ourselves. I, I understand as God has called us to to this and becoming a uh, being a forerunner at the beginning and all this, that's one thing. But again, my heart is to train up others to be able to encourage them to teach and train others. And so I'm always on the lookout for those I see that God points out to me that are not only grasping and understanding the revelation but and, and walking in it, but able to communicate well so that they can teach others. And so please pray in agreement with us. There's, you know... Want to put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand, three. In other words, there's there's something to be said for expanding the vision of the kingdom and and passing it on so others can do the same thing. And speaking of that, again, we have another school coming up in June, the 21st through the 26th at uh, 
River of Destiny Church in Illinois. Uh, you can go to River Revenue. I can say this: River of Destiny Church com to find out the uh, particulars on that. And we will be putting up a flyer on our own website and Facebook page to to let you know our schedule and. Uh, the school, now here's the thing with the schools. When we first started the schools, I, I've, I've said this before and I say it again to every student who's been before, it is our heart that you can come back anytime you want without having to pay the same fee. However, I've got to say this. I also stated, if there's room available. And so one of the things that's been happening, and I'm grateful for the zeal and the the earnestness of those of you who have been to schools, but there's there's a process. We want first-time students to have access first, and then if there's room left over, then those of you who have been to schools before can now uh, come and sit in on the course again for free. But listen, you've got to understand again, first-time students have the first option. So when you call up, you don't say, well, I was told I could come for free because I'm a student from before. And maybe that was my lack of communication. And I'll, 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 receive, I'll receive that and accept that. But I'm making it clear now, if you've been before, you can come again. But after we have a full count of first-time students, they get, they get first right of refusal. And then if there's room left over, you are more than welcome to come. And we love seeing some of you uh, over over the course of this school many times. And it's been wonderful. And I'm thankful for your heart of uh, servitude and desire to walk in this. And so uh, that's one thing we're looking at. One of the things I've been looking at now in, in the Word of God and in the world, the Lord is really, really hitting home with us on to not only be able to discern the times, but to also discern those who are among us. You know, in John, I'm, I'm going to read this, John chapter 10, verse 1. This is one of my favorite Bibles. It's the, uh, it's the proper name version of the King James Bible, but uh, it's not King James the way you know it. It's, it's the revised King James as far as they take out the these and the thous and uh, make it, modern day English, but they don't take away from what the King James has always said. So this is what it says in John chapter 10, verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he that enters in or enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Now, one of the things we're teaching is that there are angels of light, wolves in sheep clothing, and false doctrines being perpetrated all over the place. I mean, it's absolutely mind-boggling and amazing. The things that are being uh, accepted by Christians because it happens to have a flavor of the supernatural. That is not what the Word of God teaches us to do. The very first thing Jesus said in Matthew 24 and in, you know, the other Gospels when he's talking about the end of the age and the, and the disciples said, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming? And the first thing he said is, beware that no man deceives you. So the very first comment Jesus makes is we've got to be aware that there's going to be a need of discernment so that we won't be deceived. And yet for that admonition, that caution whole groups of people are being swept away with all sorts of bizarre doctrines, absolutely not founded in Scripture. And so people want to know, how do you walk in discernment? Well, you, you know, you, you learn to discern by knowing what's truth. The greatest benefit to your ability to discern is your ability to understand and rightly divide the Word of God by the leading of the Spirit. So you've got to know the Word of God. You've got to know the Word of God. And uh, I, I can't, I, I say this everywhere I go. I'm going to continue to say it because it's obvious. There's so many that don't understand this. If it's not in the Word, set it aside, ignore it, get away from it. 
If it's in the word, then ask God to give you good understanding. But other than that, stay away from anything that's not doctrinally sound based upon scripture. That's a great caution right now. And uh, very important. But this scripture teaches that even in the church or in the sheepfold, there are those that don't come through the door who is Jesus, but sneak in unawares. And, you know, they can speak Christianese. They can look Christian. They can wear the crosses. And I mean, they're masked. But inside, who are they serving? It is a known fact right now that many in the New Age and in witchcraft are infiltrating churches to not only cause confusion, but to lead God's people astray. We see a great mixture right now of Eastern mysticism and and mystical practices coming into the church that have no basis in Scripture except for to be pointed out that they're doctrines of demons. And because most of God's people are unaware of the strategies of the devil and not very versed in Scripture, they oftentimes fall into these these deceptions. Again, with all my heart, I want to caution you to grab hold of the Word of God tightly and hold on to what's happening in the world loosely. It's the Word of God that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, not the testimony of others not the doctrine or teaching of others, the Word of God. Well, I got that little preach out of my system for the moment. I'm sure it'll pop back up many times in the future because of the hour we live in. Another thing, you know, I don't know where you guys are, are living and that are hearing this, but these bizarre weather that's going on, part of the uh, cooling that we felt in the Pacific Northwest, we live in Spokane, Washington, is got to do with just part of it. It's got to do with the uh, abundance of ash that's been spewn forth into the atmosphere with over 46 active volcanoes. That is bringing a little bit of a cooling to the uh, the whole world, actually. Right today, we've got 36 degrees, and it's mid-April for heaven's sakes, almost mid-April. That's not normal. One day we'll get up to the mid 60s. The next day we're down in the low 30s. Snow happening. This is this is not normal. This is a little bit bizarre. But I'm encouraged because the Lord says that at the end of the age, there's going to be all sorts of uh, signs pointing towards the coming of the Lord. This is but one of them. Bizarre weather in, in many places, according to the uh, Aramaic Bible, the Lamsa version of the Aramaic Bible. And so... We're hearing of wars and rumors of wars. They're talking about shortages of food and and famine coming to many places. They're talking about a new one world money system coming out and being enacted shortly. All of these things have been foretold in scripture and all we have to do is look in the word to understand where we are in Christ. These are nothing to be feared. This is nothing at all to be feared. This is something to recognize as a sure sign of the eminence of the return of Messiah, our Lord Jesus. And so, though it's serious, we should be rejoicing. We should be joyful because we can see, as it were, the handwriting on the wall. The signs of the times are very indicative of biblical prophecy coming to pass right now. And so what should we be doing? Well, every day we should be in the Word, we should be praying and We should be asking Holy Spirit what it is we're to do this day. I'm a firm believer in the authority of the believer, but I also understand that anybody that has authority must recognize they're under authority. You can't have authority in and of yourself. All authority is delegated. So to have authority, you have been given authority, and it was delegated by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus himself via the Holy Spirit. Therefore, before you just jump in and think you got the right to do something, you must get uh, direction from your commander-in-chief, who is the Lord. So all throughout the day and every morning, every night, Lord, what are you saying? What is it you want us to do? Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? That's why it's so important to develop a relationship with the Lord and know his word so you're sensitive and can hear the voice of God and accomplish what he tells you to do. 
always and forever, the most important facet of our Christian walk is to develop a greater relationship with the Lord because it's through relationship we learn how to hear the voice of God and we can be obedient to that voice and then we can fulfill our destiny and hear at the end of our sojourn or our tour of duty, if you will, on this earth, well done, good and faithful servant. But we have been a little bit lax in coming to our commander-in-chief to hear for ourselves what he's telling us for each day. And again, I want to encourage you in this. It's so important right now to know the voice of God and to do what he tells you to do. So I want to pray for you for a moment. And then uh, we look forward to being back together next week with uh, the next the next session, I should say, with Michael. And then Reshma and others we've slated to have come and speak and visit with us. God bless you guys. Father, I just pray for your people that they would develop in relationship, grow in sensitivity, and know your voice intimately, that we would be those who know your word, know your voice, and are not easily deceived, but are aware of that which is taking place around us. Lord, we want to be people that can not only discern the times, but can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart based upon what you said the Holy Spirit does in us and through us. That's what the word does. And so if we have the word in us, we can begin to discern the thoughts and intents of hearts. That's the fruit of what's taking place in the lives of others. Lord, I I don't want to be moved by the miraculous or by the supernatural, even by the spectacular. I want to be moved by your spirit. And I pray that your people, as they mature at the end of the age into this final season of of great awakening and great victory for your body, that their heart would be united together with you as one, and you would receive glory and honor as never before. I thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week for our next library fireside chat.